Welcome to Small Talk Daily for Monday, February 1st, 2010. This morning I'd like to go through the creation of a simple web service using the Web Toolkit in VisualWorks. This would also work in Object Studio, and later this week I'll try to cover doing the equivalent thing using Seaside. But the things I preloaded first were Web Toolkit, which I loaded from the Parcel Manager, and you see that Web Toolkit is here. And then the other thing I preloaded from the public store, although it's also a parcel in the system, is the JSON Reader. Once I got those two things in, what I need to do is a couple of things. I need to come up here to the launcher, open the definition tool for the server console. I need to create a server, and I'm going to create a tiny HTTP because I do not want to have to set up Apache on my Mac, and I don't want to have to go ahead and set up a CGI relay or a proxy pass thing, so I'm just going to run this locally in Smalltalk. I'm going to define a port, and then I'm going to hit Create and Start. And that's really all I have to do there. The other couple of things I need to do is I need to define a service in a webtools.ini file. You can copy that down from the web directory in the VisualWorks distribution, and it looks like this. Let's go ahead and open a file, open, and I'll just start typing web and select webtools.ini. And that file looks like this. It's very simple. I'm going with all the defaults up here and down here. I'm just defining a new service called services, and it's defined in services site.ini. And what that file looks like is this. So let's go down to services site, and that's here. And that guy looks like this. Again, all the defaults, configuration, I'm giving it a directory, although there's nothing in that directory. I just gave it a directory to look at. The namespace that I'm working in is called services, which means when I define my class, that's where it's going to expect to resolve things. And the description is just something to show up in the configuration tool. No home, because it's just a servlet that's expected to serve JSON in this case. It could just as easily be serving XML. I could have HTML pages associated with this, in which case I'd have a home, but I'm going with something very basic here. So nothing else is going on here. It's all empty beyond that. So once that's done, now I need to do one other thing. I need to actually define my class. Now, rather than watch me type, I'm going to load this in from my repository. So I've got a services example written already. I'm going to go ahead and load that. Now, once that's in, let's go take a look at what it does. And here I have it. I have a namespace called services and I'm letting it resolve net and visual wave. I actually don't need much beyond visual wave, but let's go ahead to this and take a look at the instance side. There's two methods of interest here. In the initialize, I'm creating an instance variable called data just so I have something to return, and I'm giving it my name and a title. And then the do get. This is how the servlet goes ahead and responds to things. I'm giving it a content type of application JSON, setting the status to 200, having the content be self data as JSON, telling the response that the content length is the content size, and then writing the actual content on the stream. And that's really all I need to do to hand JSON back as a request, so I have a RESTful service here defined as a servlet that is going to hand back JSON. And the only other thing you need to worry about is, let's show you how this is defined, going here to definition. When I created this class, I subclassed it from single thread model servlet. And the reason for that is that if you use the other hierarchy, thing here. So if I go here, I use HTTP servlet. One instance of this is created and it assumes statelessness. That's not what I've got here. I am going to assume state so it has its individual request response and any other variables I care to give it. And that's what I've got. I've got another variable. I want a new one of these created every single time a request comes in so they get their own independent copy of data. So that's all I need to do there. Now let's go ahead and I'll bring up a browser and I'll try to make a request to the URL and see what happens. Okay, so this is the URL, localhost8011, services because that's the name of my service, servlet because that tells it I'm looking at a servlet, and then the name of the class is what you use. Now you could do other various things to have that servlet have a different name. I'm just going with class name as the default. Now let's hit return, and you notice immediately it comes down. I tried this out first, so it downloaded this, and then Safari went ahead and renamed it because I downloaded it again. It knows that the JSON isn't something I can display in the browser, so it goes ahead and downloads it to me. And if I go ahead and open this, It'll bring up the text editor, and you can see there it is. I've got JSON for my name and title, so it worked exactly as we expected. And that's really all there is to defining a web service in a RESTful fashion in Smalltalk, in this case using the Web Toolkit. You go ahead and get all the basic setup out of the way, which you only need to do once, really, for each service level you're defining. So I defined one called Services. And then once I've got all that, it's just a matter of defining a servlet class 
and going ahead and putting in your API and having it return whatever is appropriate here. And that's really all you need to do. So that's about it for today. Until next time, have fun with Smalltalk.